photosynthesis experiments. So, before we start to look at an experiment that could prove this equation, let's remind ourselves of the equation. So the equation for photosynthesis is carbon dioxide plus water in the presence of light and chlorophyll goes to glucose plus oxygen, or if you're going to do it in terms of symbols, carbon dioxide plus water in the presence of light and chlorophyll go to glucose plus oxygen and to balance it we need to add in the sixes so it's six CO2 plus six H2O in the presence of light and chlorophyll go to C6H12O6 plus six O2. So, how are we going to do an experiment to prove that photosynthesis is taking place and to prove that this is indeed what's going on? How are we going to show that photosynthesis is taking place? Well, here's our plant in the sunlight. So it should be taking carbon dioxide and water and producing glucose and oxygen. Uh, so we need to look at the things that we could potentially measure. So either we need to measure the uptake of the reactants or we need to measure the production of the products. Now, because um, water is taken up by the roots, it's relatively, and so much of it is lost in transpiration, that's quite a tricky one to measure. Um, the uptake of a gas is also quite a tricky one to measure. So we're really looking at the production of the products. Now we can see that oxygen is um, being produced if we use an aquatic plant, but in general, what we want to do is we want to look at the the production of glucose. Now, here's the tricky thing. If glucose is made in a cell, then obviously what that's going to do is it's going to alter the water potential of that cell. So if we have lots of glucose molecules in our cell, then potentially what could happen is that could change the water potential of the cell, and that could make much change how the water moves around the plant. So um, the plant doesn't store glucose as glucose, instead it joins the glucose molecules together and when we join glucose molecules together we make starch which means that what we can do is we can test whether photosynthesis is taking place by testing for the presence of starch and obviously we do that using the iodine test so on this white tile I've got some starch and in my pipette I've got some iodine and you can see straight away as soon as I add iodine to the starch um, you can on the bit of paper there where I've had a dribble um, you get this deep blue black colour showing us that starch is present. So that's what we're going to test for and why we're going to test for starch but what are we actually going to do? Well first of all we need to think what is needed for photosynthesis to occur. So if we look back at our equation, we're going to need carbon dioxide, we're going to need water, we're going to need light, and we're going to need chlorophyll. Now the problem is, if you um, do anything that gets rid of water in the plant, you tend to kill the plant, because water is required for such a great amount of metabolic function. So we can't really test for the presence of water, but we can test to check that carbon dioxide is required, that light is required, and that chlorophyll is required. And that is exactly what we're going to do. So. How on earth are we going to do that? Well, first of all, we're going to take our plant. Now we're going to assume that our plant has been merrily photosynthesizing, and if it has been merrily photosynthesizing, then it's going to have um, starch in its leaves. Now, if we want to test whether one of these factors has an effect, then we need to try and have a plant without starch in its leaves. So what we do is we put our plant in a large box or in a dark place, okay, so that no light can get in, so it's entirely dark in here, and we leave it in there for around about 24 hours, okay. Now what that is going to do is it is going to de-starch uh, the leaves. So that's going to mean that these leaves, when they come out of this box, will have no stored starch in them. So then when we test our leaves for starch after our experiment, if they have starch in them, we know it's as a result of what we have done, 
not just because the plant was photosynthesizing before we started the experiment. So, what are we going to do? Well, the first factor that we're going to test for is light and whether light has an effect. So what you will do is you'll take your leaf and you will paper clip onto it something that does not allow the light through. That could be a piece of black card or possibly some tin foil. Now you can either do this in a very straightforward shape like I've drawn or in a slightly more imaginative shape and then we will leave it and allow the plant to photosynthesize naturally and test the leaf after 24 to 48 hours. The second thing that we're going to do is we're going to test for the presence of um, carbon dioxide and what that does. Now, to, test, to take carbon dioxide away, what we have to do is we have to put the leaf into a bag. So here is our bag that is sealed and as much as possible airtight. And in the bag, we are going to have a chemical, and that chemical is called soda lime. The chemical soda lime will absorb carbon dioxide. So that means that in this whole bag, uh, there will then be absolutely no uh, carbon dioxide. So we'll be able to see what the effect of removing carbon dioxide um, from the atmosphere has. In the next one, we'll also put a bag around the leaf, um, but this time we'll put a different chemical in. Instead of absorbing carbon dioxide, um, this one is uh, called hydrogen carbonate, and it actually releases carbon dioxide. So um, it's kind of like the reverse of the previous one, if you like, and it will enable us to really see the role of carbon dioxide because if it has a role then it should be um, we should see that starch is present in this leaf and not in the previous one so this will actually allow um, carbon dioxide to um, be released into the atmosphere around the leaf now the final one involves a slightly different type of leaf called a variegated leaf. Now obviously you can't do this to the leaf, you have to have an appropriately um, shaped or coloured leaf. And what a variegated leaf is, is it's one that's more than one colour. So what we're looking for is a leaf that is green in one area and then white in the other area. Because in this area the, there is um, chlorophyll present um, whereas in this area there is no chlorophyll present. So uh, we should therefore be able to see how um, chlorophyll affects photosynthesis. So if that's sort of how we're going to set the experiment up, how are we then going to test the leaves? Well. The first thing that you're going to have to do is you'll take your leaf from your plant. Now it's important that the um, whole plant is alive and you're not just testing individual leaves. Because if you just have individual leaves um, plucked off a plant, then the leaf on its own can't sustain itself. It needs to have um, water and other things brought to the leaf. So it has to be part of a plant. So, but once you've um, set up your experiment and left it for some time, then you take your leaf off and you test the leaf. So the first thing we do is we put our leaf um, into uh, water and we boil that water um, so that the leaf is boiling for around about um, five minutes. Okay? What this does is it starts to break down um, the cell walls so that it makes it easier for us to get the starch in the iodine in to test for the presence of starch. Then we have a problem because our leaf is still very green and obviously we want to see a colour change so we'll try and get rid of the green. In the boiling tube we have some ethanol. Now a safety point here. If you have ethanol you must not have naked flames so you must make sure that your Bunsen burner that you use to boil your leaf with is off before you um, get your ethanol. 
Then what you do is you put your leaf inside the ethanol and you're going to leave it in here for two to three minutes. And what you will see is that the green colour of the leaf starts to leave the leaf and enter the ethanol. So you're going to end up with very green ethanol and a hopefully less green leaf. Then after that what you have to do is you have to put your leaf back into um, just a beaker of plain water. Okay, This is because the presence of the ethanol will actually have made the leaf very brittle and so we need to try and um, get rid of the ethanol so that the leaf is then more flexible again. And then finally what you'll do is you will spread your leaf out on a white tile and then you will get a pipette and you will take some iodine and then you will drip the iodine and flood um, the leaf with your iodine so you can then see the colour change. Now that summarises the information about these experiments. What you need to do now is go to your booklet and answer the questions on page 9.